This is Proper Sport. This is LS11. Join myself, Darren Harper, and Ryan Wilson from the Pigeon Detectives every Wednesday, 7.30 a.m. We're live on Facebook, Periscope, and YouTube. Just search LS11, and we're going to be talking Leeds United. Thoughts and feelings at the upcoming season. Whether or not Leeds United are actually going to bring any players in. And will Leeds United finally make it into the Premier League? in their centenary year. Join us, myself, Darren Harper, and Ryan Wilson from the Pigeon Detectives every Wednesday here on Proper Sport at 7.30am. And of course, if you miss it, you can download the podcast from your favourite podcast app. Your midweek fix of Leeds United. It's LS11. Leeds United made the most of their second chance in the European Cup against Stuttgart team they say has more foreign reserves than the Bank of England. Leeds won 2-1 in Barcelona in front of a tiny crowd. Their hero was Carl Schutt. He scored the winner less than a minute after coming on as a substitute. And tomorrow's his birthday. This is Saez. Let's go past another. And Stein through. Flag stays down and the ball is in. Mateus Klick. That, my friends, is a sound of success. <laughs> <laughs> Don't want to get carried away, but we're definitely going to push champions. No, I, I, I'll, I'll turn it down a bit. I'll turn it down. Get a bit excited. Uh, so, what better way to discuss the sound of success than with Leeds United Chief Executive, Mr. Angus Kinnear. Welcome to the show, Angus. Great to be here. Yeah, uh, we're very glad you're here as well. We we're beginning to think you might not be coming. We've all been hanging out the way window. <laughs> <laughs> so, we'll get into the Stoke game and uh, we'll discuss all things Leeds United with Angus. Um, this is obviously Young Ben here. Hello, Hello. Young Ben. How are you? I'm good. How good. Uh, with his own microphone that he's just pointed out to us. Rag is still here with his predictor yeah. section. And uh, Old Ben's here. All right, Old Ben. All right. How are you? Yeah, not bad. Good. So, I can't think of a better place to start than Ellen Road. On Sunday, not Saturday, as I've repeatedly said over and over again, that it was a Saturday game when it wasn't. How do we feel? Young Ben. I mean, yeah, a complete contrast into the way I walked out feeling the last game of last season. Um, Walking in full of optimism, you know. There's literally no better feeling than walking into a packed out Ellen Road. You know, it's, it's the best feeling. And then when that first goal went in, all hell just broke loose in stands. Performance were absolutely brilliant, and you know I came out massively happy. It made made my weekend, to be honest. Made this week looking forward to the derby game now as well. Yeah, Angus, what what were the feeling in the camp before the game? Was it apprehension, nerves, or excitement? I think nervous excitement. Um, we uh, everyone worked so hard across the summer, and we know it's only one it's only one match, and there's there's you know there's a long season ahead of us. But um, we just wanted the team. The team, I thought, felt the team would work so hard that they deserved, they deserved to get them fans on side from the first game. And I think from you know the day was just great. I think we broke you know broke a record in terms of the opening day attendance. We had a you know fantastic um, tribute to, to to Paul you know before the game and, and you know just which, which which I think everybody wanted to, wanted to do. And uh, for me, although the result was superb, the performance just was so different from what we'd seen at the back end of the last season and I think you know, we felt slightly vindicated because I think that you know the, the core of the existing squad have had a bit of a hard time from the fan base and we've always felt that there was something there we, 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 we would totally accept they need to be uh, it needed to be strengthened and we think we've strengthened it but you know out of that starting 11 I think only Barrett, Barry was the only addition we had a revitalized click in, in in the midfield yeah but I've seldom seen a team you know Change so dramatically across across a, a close season and come back with such a, with such vigour. So we were um, we're trying to keep our feet on the ground, but you know, we're all fans at the same time. So yeah. we had a, we had a very nice evening. Afterwards. Yeah, I think the same was said for us because I mean we've obviously we've got a group that we discussed this about, and when um, starting eleven came out, there was a couple of eyebrows raised. I don't think any of us were massively surprised because we discussed the team sheet before, and we always felt that you know Pontus, uh, Bamford, and and possibly Harrison might not be just quite ready to start just yet after obviously joining the joining the squad quite late. Um, but 
I'll be honest, 15 minutes in, I was like, what, what's this? What were these? My son were sat there going, is this Leeds, Dad? Are you sure? Are you sure, Are you sure this is Leeds? Didn't they have goals? It was like a last different year? world. From, it was unbelievable. From last season's team, really. Yeah, it was. Yeah. And I guess that's that's testament to the club of bringing someone in like Marcelo Bielsa, who has obviously had that big impact on on what were last year average players, and then they're playing like well, the beat the favourites, so comfortably as well. Yeah, played him off the park. Massive. Yeah, absolutely. And for for Ryan Shawcross to come out in the press as he did and said we were caught by we were caught surprised by Leeds, and you think that's a strange comment to come from someone who's played a lot of games in the Championship, should know exactly what the Champions about. They've got Gary Rowett there, who's made his trade in the Championship. You think they'd fully expect what the Championship's all about? And to be honest, I think he just didn't want to turn around and say, "Look, we got battered by the better team." Mm, yeah. To be honest, well, and that's ultimately what is that what the Championship's about though? The way we played? Well, because I hope it is maybe from now maybe on. it was the way Wolves played last season, but we were brilliant. On yeah, Sunday. absolutely, absolutely yeah. brilliant. And I think um, a few people have obviously we've got a lot of questions about transfers, but a few people have mentioned already. Click Mateus, click. I mean, obviously he had a bit of a tough year last year. Found himself back out to to Holland, uh, and I think in the Dutch press before he came back, he mentioned that you know he had unfinished business. And I think going on Sunday's display, I definitely agree. He has definitely got unfinished business. I mean, you know, fair play to him when he uh, when he went on on loan. You know, a lot of players are like. I'm glad I'm, you know, he hadn't worked out for him. He's clearly a talented player. I mean, he's a, he's a mm. Polish international, you know, played at the highest, the highest standard. But to his credit, when, uh, when he left, the last thing he said to me was, I'll be coming back and, you know, I'm going to come back and I'm going to prove you wrong. Me, but the, but the, but the club as a, as a whole. And uh, I think his performances in pre-season and, uh, and, you know, the way he's applied himself. Um, and, uh, you know, he, he, started, started the, he started the season brilliantly. So, I mean, I think that's, when I look at what's... Ex- going to take to go up or when we look at what's going to take I think it's, you need some things like that to happen you need a player who you've perhaps written off to come yeah. back and prove himself you need you need Samu to, to you know who wasn't the greatest in pre-season to show us that he can be the best attacking midfielder in the league and I think if those types of things work for us then we've got you know we could have a real chance yeah definitely go out to say on that young Ben about uh, Saez I need to just hold my hands up and apologise really yeah I slated him <laughs> all over pre-season I slated him and you know, completely proved me wrong. But one of the best players on pitch by far. Yeah, by yeah, far. We are made, it just made everything happen and just all came through him. Yeah, I think I put a tweet out after the game uh, about click and put a little hands emoji and say, "Hold my hands up." I thought you were done at Leeds, but absolutely shows me what I know about football, to be honest. Yeah. <laughs> and you know, proved us all wrong. So yeah, fair a bit of a shout out for Victor Arta as well, who's taken a lot of stick off a lot of people. And you, transfer, you can bring someone in and it might not work, but and I, that's, I guess in a way last year a lot of them didn't work but a lot of them now have, have sort of going on on Sunday have proved that they can they are good players yeah definitely but you get the and they just need the right environment and I think uh, going back to Victor as well I watched the um, leading Leeds United bit that Sky did the other day which was fantastic and he even mentioned on there he had the opportunity to go back but he still feels like he's got something to prove yeah. and I think that's when we see the best from Leeds you know kind of when we're backed into a corner a little bit as fans, as a team, as a mm. club, as a city, that's when you see the best of Leeds. I think. When no, I mean, v- Victor's obsessed with making Leeds successful. I mean, if you spend any time with him, he's a, he's he's a, you know, in terms of football passion, there's there's few people to kind of beat him. And he was he was clearly, you know, we were all devastated by the way last season ended in, in terms of in terms of how it started. But you know, to be fair to Victor, he had a belief in 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 the players that he that he brought in. And I think when you're operating at the, at the budgetary level, we are. You're going to get a mixed bag. So if you if you look at what we picked up, you know, Samu and Alioski and uh, and Forshaw and and Tyler Roberts, who I think will be like a, you know, a cliche, but I think he'll be like a new signing as, as as well. Yeah. There's some real quality in that, but you can't, you know, for every Samu, you're going to get one or two that perhaps don't work don't work the same the same way. But um, I think you know this year you've, you've seen there's been a there's been a change in a change in strategy, and we've gone for uh, you know we've gone for players who who should all be playing first team football they've all come to play in the first team there's no there's no development players in yeah. it so i think if we take you know the the core of the existing squad and we and we get some of those players to to perform at the level we think they're capable of and then we blend that with you know someone like patrick who definitely has 20 goals in him at at uh, at, at this level although he'll do well to get in the team based on how <laughs> yeah. he plays yeah definitely um, yeah but that but but you know when we first met Marcel, that's what he wanted he wants he wants two two people in every position who you really can't you know 
because there's not much separate between them, yeah. you can't really separate them. there's massive competition and people know that if they play badly they're not going to be in the next in the next match and he wants to be in a position where we're all comfortable that you know who do you want to start against them um, against derby you know yeah Bad Bamford or roof that uh, that kind of leads us on a little bit so uh, there's a lot of there's a hell of a lot of uh, frustration over the summer in terms of the didn't think that anything was going on so I think the best place to start is obviously the players finish the season we see all Instagram videos of them on some lovely beach somewhere what's it mean for you guys at the club because obviously I'm guessing that it's definitely not disappearing on holiday for four weeks no there's, there's been no there's been no holidays it, uh, it it just starts it starts straight away and I think um, you know understanding how long the transfer process takes um, is important. I think at the start of the, the season, we you know we talked about Marcelo coming on board, and we talked about you know, our transfer p plans being well advanced. And I think that was quoted back quite a lot. You know, <laughs> you know, how advanced can they be if you haven't done anything? And that's and that's fair enough. But you know they really they really start with an analysis of of what's gone what's gone wrong. And that process had started in the back half of last season when we knew that you know the playoffs really were going to be a stretch, and working with our, with our analysts and, and understanding where we hadn't been successful and where other teams had and and, and what we needed to do to, to fix it, and then there becomes a process of uh, of identifying the targets and that starts with the with the type of player, um, and uh, uh, and then and then starts to, uh, to 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 focus down to get into into the specifics and Victor and the scouting team we have. I think three or four analytical companies working with us now who can who, who can help in that work and, and can and can look at an international pool of playing talent. Um, so when we spoke to Marcelo, which was when we sort of we thought we were in a good position, he his analysis of the team aligned very much with ours, which was encouraging in terms of what needed to be done. Um, but then it just takes a, a while to get the stuff to, to get the things done. You know, you have to approach the club, you have to approach the agent, you have to approach the player. The market constantly changes. There's players that you think you want, and then when you meet them, you decide you don't. Um, there are, um, uh, you know, there are teams who there are opportunities which you don't think are going to arrive, which which do. So you know, um, Barry Douglas is an exact, a, you know, perfect example of that. Barry Douglas was number number one in terms of the left backs that we that we wanted in the league, but we weren't focused him, on him at all because we didn't think there was any chance that Wolves. We're going to uh, we're going to consider selling him as soon as you get intelligence in the marketplace that uh, that 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 might be an option and Wolves are looking at other players. Then he became he immediately jumps to the top of our priority list. Yeah. You know, I think we've got I think we've got the two foot best fullbacks in the in the league this this season now. Um, so uh, it's it's a constantly shifting shifting um, sort of landscape. And what's hard is um, is to try and communicate to the to the fan base that stuff is happening and that work is. You know, work is happening. And our scouts and Victor and myself and, and Andrea, you know, right up to the owner, were working tirelessly to try and make things happen. And ideally, if you could have a perfect world, we'd have done it earlier because then we'd have, the players have more time to integrate. And uh, Marcelo is very focused on the team having had time to integrate into his system. So as players are coming in now, he's you know, as he proved at the weekend, they're not quite ready mm. to step straight into the team. Um, but we have to make a call of what's more important you get them in early or you get them you get them right and, and, and we waited and there has been um, uh, there's been much more movement in the latter half of the window which is which is which is normally the case but everybody that we've uh, we've signed whether it be loan or, or permanent was was on the target list in the in the original in in, in, in the, at the start of the summer and you know I think we've done you know, we're very satisfied with the with the business we've done, and there are some movements as you know, people have seen. I mean, some of the stuff in the press, I have absolutely, you know, it defines fake news. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you know and, I, and there's times where I go to Victor and go, "Do you know about this?" And he goes, "No," and we, neither of us know about it. But some of the stories are some of the some of the uh, the narratives around players that we're pursuing are, are you know uh, are, are correct, and yeah. you know, and we just need to make sure that we we uh, we get the right person at the end of that process, and and try and you know, I uh, we're as you know. It's difficult not to be impatient, but uh, but 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 we I think we've ended up in a in a, in a decent position, and we've got you know a few days to go, um, but we're where we want it to be. How but much, if any, did the World Cup have on it? Because globally, the transfer market seemed quiet during the World Cup. Yeah, so um, I, I think I think I mentioned at some stage that the World Cup had slowed things down, and and uh, and again, I think got a little bit of abuse about you know, <laughs> we, you know if you're signing Neymar, then maybe, but uh, but, but it has a knock on effect. It, it, ha it has a knock. It has a knock on effect. I mean, part of it is the whole football world is is at the World Cup or involved in the World Cup, and so therefore agents and players are are, um, are are not focused on the next move. And the second thing is there is a there is a knock on effect as as Premier League players. You know, come and go. Um, other opportunities, other opportunities emerge. You know, you know, and and 
Barry Douglas is a, is a good example of that. Of you know, you have to wait for something at Premier League level to happen, and once they'd identified their target, you know, we, we then had ours. And, and similarly, you know, with the um, with the Chelsea loanies, you know, Chelsea are trying to work on what's their squad going to be for next season, who's going to be in it and who's not going to be in it, who, who are they prepared to loan, who are they not prepared yeah. to loan. And we, we joked about it a few weeks ago when, when yeah. the loans first came in, there's 20 odd players to Chelsea that they need to start out going on loan. So I mean, there must be a guy with a file <laughs> saying, right, I'm working on him today, where can I ship him out to? And stuff like that. <laughs> well, you know, p- um, part of the challenge as well is, is getting the, uh, you know, getting the focus from from, from the other clubs. So as you can mm. imagine, you know, Chelsea, Chelsea's with, you know, with his r- r- greatest respect to uh, to Jamal and Lewis, you know, that is not the centre of Chelsea's yeah. board's transfer business. It's an, it's an important part of it, but they've, so, you know, we need to wait, you know, be patient till, until they, they've, they've got the, um, you know, they've got the bandwidth to have those, to have those discussions. But, uh, um, you know the loan market's important for championship clubs it's become increasingly important and you know you look at how Chelsea value Jamal and Lewis in terms of in terms of what they pay them and what they value them from a transfer perspective and uh, and you know they, they should be fantastic championship additions yeah definitely uh, it leads us on well to Mr Bielsa um, I'll be honest I'll hold my hand up um, obviously there was the rumours going around who were going to be the next manager I can't remember who was in the betting and then suddenly Marcelo Bielsa came in from left field and I remember actually saying I have no idea who this person is. <clears throat> then I did a little bit of, uh, obviously, research, as you do. Uh, YouTube, Wikipedia. Google, Wikipedia, everywhere else you could find. And uh, obviously came across um, what you could say were a pioneer, really, in, in, in tactical development within football with his Argentina squad, with his Chile squad and stuff like that. So how did Marcelo Bielsa appear on Legion United's radar? Well, I think there was... Um Again, you're starting from analysis of, 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 of what you know where things hadn't hadn't worked, and one of the things we've we've learned, and I think what's changed over the last um, the last year, is just realizing what a big job leading Leeds is. It's you know it's it, it, it's one I think that requires experience and gravitas. It's it's one that where well, you need to be in a position if things don't go go well, the fans will stick with you because they know you've got that capability. So it's a I think we had in Thomas and uh, and in Paul we'd, we we thought. You know, it, it was going to be. We had really, you know, ambitious, young, talented coaches who could who could grow grow with the club. But we know that um, you know Leeds demand for success, and because they haven't had it for a while, there is a um, there's a, a very valid impatience, and, and success needs to come more, you know more quickly. And uh, I think Andrea came out publicly and said he wanted someone with um, you know with charisma and, and gravitas. And uh, uh, Victor was the first was the first person to, to mention uh, Marcelo and and um, and to be honest, you know, you could have just laughed it off as a ridiculous suggestion. <laughs> but um, you know, Andrea has um, you know Andrea does have some flaws, but ambition isn't one of them. And uh, and he just said, no, I think we can, um, you know, I think we could we could make this happen, and we and we should at least try. And what was interesting with with Marcelo is is whilst everyone's you know. I think surprised that he's come to Leeds, he sees it as a as a massive opportunity for him. So he doesn't feel in any way that he's doing as a favour. He feels that this is, you know, that he's almost humbled to have the op- have the opportunity. And I think yeah. when you speak to people in 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 world football, you know, whoever whoever gets it right here from a managerial perspective is just going to be an absolute hero. And I think he got that. Mm-hmm. And uh, and I think it was reinforced to him on um, on uh, on uh, uh, Sunday because. Because the atmosphere was, it was the, it was the cauldron that everybody wants Alan Road to be, and uh, and you know he's a he's a man who's passionate about football and loves football, and you just get it when you're at Ellen Road, I think. Yeah, I think I saw some in the press this week, maybe last week, talking about it's not about money for him, it's about passion and feeling the, feel, sort of feeling the emotion. I think he said about around the club and you know what it, what it means to everybody else. Yeah. Obviously, there was <clears throat> again, don't believe everything reading the press, but it was mentioned about. Marcelo trying to teach the players, you know, what it takes to be a Leeds United fan, and what Leeds, fa- Leeds United fans have to sacrifice to come and watch their club. So we've heard stories of litter collecting, maybe. Well, I think I think he's he wants to sort of keep what happens at the training ground, yeah, uh, of course, private. Yeah. But I think what what he what he definitely you know he is about he is about understanding or getting the players to understand what a privileged position they're in. I mean, you know, an amazing privilege to earn your money playing a sport you love and even more so to play for such a such a great club. So I think um, uh, you know, whilst I was surprised that it was it sort of manifested itself so quickly um, I think he's been drilling into the players, you know, quite what it's going to take to represent the club and I think that was that was demonstrated just brilliantly by, by every one of them and, and it, I mean it was we were, trying, we were trying to just, you know, we were having a discussion whether we could 
find a bad performance in that game. And I don't. We, we know, talked I, about I don't it think tonight we could. before. Could, I, I, could. I think um, we were talking before you came, and I think we were and a few players' names were chirping up, and then somebody said there weren't anybody who weren't you know excellent the entire game through. I mean, I'll be honest. When the game started, I was a little bit concerned with Phobe's height next to Berardi, for example. He yeah. absolutely marshalled him the entire game, yeah. um, and you know, and, and frustrated him. And even when they brought Crouch on, I think you said earlier, Ben, that he didn't really cause us a massive amount of problems. Where sometimes he can just by his sheer physical attributes of being such a tall bloke. But so, yeah, absolute credit to him. So Crouch is always going to win win the ball with his height, but then they had Bojan running around him, and we shut him off. And so that the the key thing for me, the way we sort of dealt with sort of the second ball and second phases of stuff that we were, and the fitness that sort of allowed us to do that yeah. and well I, I definitely yeah. think you know Marcelo is he is um, he's holistic in his management style so it's you know fitness is important nutrition is important mentality is important the you know the atmosphere at the, at the training ground I, I think we've talked about it before but you know when we in the first interview before we or second interview before we'd even even it offered him the job he had drawn up plans for the training ground in terms of how it had to change and, and all of it was around his football philosophy of wanting the players to spend longer there and to spend more time you know more time together there so I think you know those things are sort of team, team spirit and taking personal responsibility and being confident and I think the last season there was there was an element of uh, of you know from a I think our mental mentality was fragile in parts. You know, when things didn't go wrong for us, we didn't feel like we were we were going to be able to we we're going to be able to recover. And I'm not, you know, we don't we don't know whether Marcelo's got all the answers yet, but it's, yeah. it's certainly part of the plan. I, I, yeah, I dare say it's been a criticism of definitely us a lot over over the years, really, that you know some of the players are detached away from the fan base a little bit, detached away from the club in general, as in you know what. A, I know if there's any non-Leeds fans listening, I'll be in for some pelters. But what a massive, massive club this is, and what it generally means to, to, to its to its fans and to the people who are you know in and around it. Uh, and you know any any sort of effort to bring that back to the current crop of players we've got now, I'm sure is welcomed across the board by everybody. I think in a way, it would, you sort of look at it now and think maybe a bit of a of a culture thing. I mean, from previous owners, I'm not saying from Roger Zan when when he's coming in on, but he had to sort of pick that up and. It seems with Bielsa now we're sort of creating a, a a more together sort of feeling, and the players feel like that, and and the fans are starting to feel like that, and there's something we can believe in now with going from just from Saturday and bringing players like Bamford and what have you. I think that sort of just strengthens everything, mm. and if you're going, it's all sort of going down the same route. Whereas I think before, like you'd see players that. Just didn't seem to be putting in the effort in at times and stuff I, like that. I think that's what it boils down to. Being a Leeds fan, what do you want to see, right? You, you obviously want to see your team win, but you want to see the players run around like you would if you yeah. were on the field. Like, yeah. there's no way I could ever play professional football. But if I put that white shirt on, I'd run run my blood to water. And you want to see that effort. And you know that those type of players, they've got something. So if they do that, they'll be rewarded with that. And I know yeah. it, 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 it's a it's a long season, and everything like that. But we saw that on Sunday. We saw. 11 players and all the subs who came on who just worked really really hard and that's the bare minimum I know it should always be the bare minimum but that's what you'll get from Leeds Leeds fans won't ever betray you if you put in the effort yeah. 100% effort Let, let's look at some cult heroes of the past yeah. Paddy, Paddy Kisnarbo David Prutton Andy, uh, Hughes, Andy Hughes Andy Hughes fairly limited footballers I don't, you know, no disrespect to any of them a lot better than I can do but they, they had that in spades that that, that aggression that you know they, they, they look they look like the care if they didn't they were very good at hiding it mm. um, and yeah and that's what Leeds want I mean um, Paddy Kiznobo famously uh, decided not to have plastic surgery because he'd missed some games for Leeds and the plastic surgery on his head wasn't the priority at the time playing for Leeds was and that just endears you to fans immediately you know when we when we hear you know some of the stuff that's in the press that obviously remains between um, Marcelo and his and his playing staff and the rest of the staff at Thorpach. It, inde- it already begins to endear them to the fans already that you know it appears to be that Leeds United are at the core of, of everything around it. I mean, Mar- Marcelo came to us. We have a, a staff forum where where the whole club come together, which which was an idea Andrea had, and apparently it hadn't happened in in sort of the last thirty years. No member of staff could remember that everybody came together, players, <laughs> youth team, you know, just to, just to just to sort of say what are we what are we trying to achieve this season. And uh, Marcelo, uh, you know, did a short speech which he which he delivered in uh, in in English. And interesting, you know, the people he thanked were, you know, the groundsman, the gardener, 
the, the tea lady, the people who run the canteen, the people who clean Thorpe Arch. You know, he's very into the uh, into the into the kind of into the collective collective effort, and and uh, and I think you know for him the players are obviously critical, but they're not uh, they're not put on a pedestal. They're they're part of a, a broader team, and and he sees the fans as part of that you know that that team as well. Yeah. And uh, you know we we t- we spoke about uh, um, about you know the games last season where where I think the fans uh, um, sort of single handedly changed the result. I think we were. Two 0 down at Bristol City. Bristol City. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and the fans. And we should have won that. I think. I think the Saga hit the hit the bar in the last yeah, minute. Yeah, but yeah, yeah. It, the fans suddenly went from almost mocking the side to deciding mm. they wanted to support it. And um, and uh, and Millwall was another one where where you know the fans have played played such a you know such a part. So I think. Um, or someone called that the most classically Leeds game of all time. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> it's new but, to me, but yeah. Yeah. it's absolute irony. Me and Ben watched it on the gantry because Ben won a competition, and we were up there, weren't we? And I think did it, what it, three one at half time. Yeah, three one. And uh, one of the Millwall members of staff just decided to latch on to me, and he came over and he was singing the praises of Steve Morrison, and I was getting quite irritated by him because we were we were pretty awful first half. And I remember saying to him, "It wouldn't surprise me if this finished four apiece." Yeah. And then second half for twenty minutes was like. You know, t- typical typical Leeds United. It was like Bristol Rovers all over again, where we were just charging forward. Yeah. And I've never heard sound like that, to be honest. From mm. sitting in, uh, I've sat all over Ellen Road, but from sitting in the um, on the gantry, it was just it was just something else. It was just absolutely something else. So yeah, uh, the fans play a big part, obviously. Um, moving on slightly, then. So uh, air miles. Did we count them over the summer? <laughs> <laughs> I tell you, it's a really long flight. <laughs> I have to say, um, but it but it's, it's worth. I mean, it's one of the things which uh, which. Um, I mean, it makes the job great when you're getting a chance to go and have a have a you know Dan two day meeting with you know one of the one of the greatest uh, greatest coaches, um, and uh, it was it it was difficult to remember that we had to make a decision at the at, at, you know at the end of it because uh, it was so uh, you know it was it was so kind of intoxicating. He was so so focused and so uh, and so driven by the the opportunity and and the detail and his understanding of the of the games. You know, he had. Um, Pages and pages of notes. You know, watched every every single game. He knew the players by their numbers. Um, so uh, you know, I had to had to quickly brush up my knowledge of what everyone <laughs> played last year because he was talking about nine and fourteen and how they would and, and how they would switch. And and uh, I know it was uh, you know the, the, the meeting sort of got leaked to the press and it took us a little bit of a while to to uh, to, to to close the deal and to and to get the contract done. And um, that was really caused by the fact we couldn't get him to focus on the contact. Because every time on the contract, because every time we spoke to him, he wanted to speak about the team and the plans and the transfers and the training ground. Um, so, you know, emotionally he'd he'd taken the tar, he'd, he'd taken the job, yeah. and and he didn't really see sort of the paperwork as a sort of a, a distraction, I think, um, which was which was which was just great and gave us even even more confidence in him. Um, but it was a, um, it was a, um, it, it wasn't it wasn't an interview. It was. It was him telling us <laughs> where we've gone wrong and what we've done right. <laughs> you know, there's a great, great, chemi- great chemistry between him and uh, him and Victor, and they they see the game and understand it in in, in, in the right way. And I think that's going to be a real th- those two will be a real powerful, powerful force. Yeah, forward. I've also seen him try to embrace Yorkshire culture. Spent a couple of days at Yorkshire Show. I read somewhere that he'd gone up there to yeah, take yeah. it in. No, I think he's uh, he, yeah he's keen to uh, he's keen to sort of em- embrace the embrace the kind of club more broadly. I mean he's. Uh, I mean, the hours that they put in the training ground are, uh, are, are, are pretty crazy at the moment. So, I mean, pre, pre-season for the coaching staff has been eight in the morning till till nine nine o'clock at night. So, I'm sh- he hasn't had much downtime. But hopefully, as the season progresses, he'll be able to. Uh, it shows that the, um, the the Sky interview where you could see he wasn't comfortable with English, but at least he just tried it. And yeah. to, I think that shows a lot as well that. He's trying to embrace us as well, and and sort of be with us, and that that's everything as we just discussed. Uh, that's everything for a Leeds fan. Mm-hmm. Definitely, yeah. Uh, just to recap a few bits on um, on Facebook before it runs away with us, because it will do. A few questions about LUTV. Is there some plans to develop that for particularly overseas um, overseas fans and stuff like that? Is yeah, it? so LUTV will, will 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 continue to continue to grow. So we've just launched our uh, our YouTube. YouTube channel um, which is targeted at people who are younger perhaps young Ben maybe but for the rest of us <laughs> he's only 12 we're, we're, not, we're, not ta- we're not target audience um, we will um, we'll be streaming the games again live to the international audience and actually this this year we have the opportunity to stream uh, some midweek matches which aren't on TV to a domestic 
audience as well, so you'll be able to see them in see them in the UK. So yeah, so the, so the media channel will will, uh, will will continue to grow. Excellent. Um, how do you feel the direction of the club's changed since you came in? Because I think I interviewed you for the trust when you just come into the club, sort of then. So yeah. you had sort of twelve, thirteen months to sort of take it all in now how do you think the, how do you feel it is now compared to when you came in so I, I think we are um, the overall plan hasn't changed uh, Andrea's commitment hasn't changed I think we you know we've, we've learned some we've learned some important you know we've learned some important lessons I think there is there are some times when we've probably um, you know run before we can we can walk and I think there's been a, a we've Look to sort of focus back on the core of getting, of getting the core of the of, of the of the business right. Um, from a playing side, I think we've realised that that you know what, and I think it's because that because Leeds have been stuck in this division for for so long, um, we're not going to be afforded any time to get it right. And I think you know, the, the, probably the most uh, obvious example of that manifesting itself is in the is in the in the transfer strategy where. You know, there was a clear a clear plan for us as you know we had I think the under 23s only had nine players in and you know we needed to rebuild that we need to rebuild you know the football at, 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 at every level and create a um, you know the development path which is which the clubs benefited from both on the pitch but also financially um, in terms of in terms of player development um, and so some of the uh, some of the business that we did I think was important at the time but was um, uh, you know, it wasn't it wasn't very well received. So you take someone like uh, you know, J Roy, who we think is going to be a great player. He's played you know, pretty much every level um, for Holland um, at, at, at the youth le- you know at youth level. But you know, he's a, he's a development player, and he's probably even though he looks like he's forty, you know he's <laughs> he's, only, only just, he's, he's only just out of his he's only just out of his teens, and and actually coming along uh, coming on and expecting to spearhead. Leeds promotion charge is, is too early in, in his in his career for him. But is he going to be an asset for, for Leeds United in the in the future? I think absolutely. You know, there's people that we've um, so you know sort of got gone on, you know perhaps uh, overlooked to an extent, like someone like Ryan Edmondson, who's a local boy, massive you know ma- massive massive Leeds fan. Um, you know I think he's going to be a fantastic you know fantastic talent. Not somebody that people are going to get excited about, who's going to contribute probably massively this season. Although I think we'll we, we'll see more of him. Um, so I think we've we've sort of had to accelerate the plan. And, and this season, you know, we brought I think the clear difference is we brought in more of the finished product. You know, more of the finished product. You know. um, so rather than the Caleb Ekuban, who I think again will be a great player, and I think he's got great movement and and uh, uh, and, and great pace, but the perhaps isn't the finished product product from a finishing perspective. Um, and then you know, to, to somebody like uh, Patrick who. You know, I think in the right team and in the, in the right construct is, is somebody who can get you twenty goals. So there's been a, um, I think there's been a, a clear understanding that we just need to, you know, we, we need to, we need to purchase the finished article and people who are going are going are to contribute and 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 the, and the development area of the club whilst the academy still do a fantastic job, you know, and the purchase of younger players isn't perhaps what we need at the moment. Yeah. Leads is on quite well. Um, we're getting absolutely inundated with. Are we going to sign any more players before the Thursday's deadline? Five o'clock Thursday. Yeah, so th- Thursday's the deadline for permanence, and then yeah. we've got till the end of the month on on loans. Uh, we're constantly monitoring the monitoring the market, so that never stops. We don't want you to tell anyone uh, because <laughs> you, you you always you, know, you always get the opportunity that something might come up which is which you haven't expected to or is is you know. Is, Do you see that with the we talked about a lot last week about the transfer window like like when Barry Douglas came in, like I said that I would say he was one of your sort of targets, but one that you thought well Wolves are going to keep him. He's, he was one of their best players last year. If you'd have gone out and bought a left back in June. And then you're sort of missing out on chances that come could come across now because other teams, a player might come available because he's moved in Spain or something, and then they can go get this player. And, yeah. and I think a lot of frustration frustration is that we've not brought anyone in. But at the end of the day, the club's looking to what the best option is, and if there's something there that can that, that's better. Yeah, well, that that's that's why the market that's why the market needs to. Um, you know that's why the market tends to happen at the you know to the back mm. end of the window because everybody is weighing up their their options and particularly for us one of the uh, you know the type of players we're we're going for now are players who you know quite rightly because we're buying them for for longer term could be Premier League players mm. Mm. so they're naturally looking at Premier League opportunities yeah. as well as 
top level championship opportunities you need to them to have come to a decision of where they're going to play for that for, for that to happen so there are advantages of moving early in terms of getting the players integrated more quickly but actually letting the market play out to 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 a uh, you know to the end gives you an opportunity to evaluate yeah. you know all options and there's not many there's not when I look at what happened early in the market there's not much that we felt we'd we kind of missed out on mm. so we were very aware of the grab and situation that was a conscious decision not to go for that because we had targets we we, we wanted ahead of that but it wasn't like we were felt we were we were missing players and, mm. and the market was running away with us yeah definitely obviously um slightly hotter topic we've seen Ronnie Vieira display to Italy this week and I think the owner very candidly uh, in an interview with Phil A mentioned that you know we're at a point where still as a club we still need to ban- balance the books a little bit you know we're not at a point where we can splash in massive amount of cash around is that obvious was that obviously all the plan sort of all along a little bit to- I th- think we the plan is always to, to manage the club you know responsibly and I think there are um, there are a number of clubs at the moment in in the championship who are who are under embargo and there are a number of clubs who are you know experiencing or going to experience you know some fairly significant financial difficulties um, and is very committed to, to put the best product on the pitch that we that we possibly can um, and the balance is 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 you know pushing that and, and, and pushing you know the investment to a, to a level where we really can compete and and we think we can this this season, but not being irresponsible. And the, the challenge with uh, uh, with with Vieira is is when you have a player who is uh, you know who is worth seven million pounds and is um, um, is not first choice in the in the team. Or, you know he's perhaps not even you know not even second choice in the team. Although an important squad player and somebody that Marcelo would want have wanted to keep in the squad, um, you have to uh, you have to make the decision which is right for the. For the for, for the long term of the club, and also to an extent for the for the player because Ronaldo's a, a player who needs to be he needs to be playing. You know he you know it's not the right time in his career to be um, on the bench for a uh, for a championship side. So uh, you know uh, Ronnie you know handled himself you know I- I- impeccably, um, but um, and and it's a, it's it's a, it's a tough it's a tough decision. But I think uh, I think in terms of balancing the squad appropriately, it's it's right. And and Marcelo is very uh, very very keen on the fact that you know he wants to be able to give all players you know playing time. He says that having players in the squad who aren't going to play, you know, isn't isn't healthy for the for the for, for the for the dynamic of the squad. I guess the responsibility for the club as well that if like you say if a Vieira ain't going to play, I think he came out and said after the match about um, Japanese lad Idiguchi that he's probably not going to be playing and. And whatever sort of the future is for his for their game, the club needs to be responsible and look at that as well. And and if if it involves moving them on or or putting them in, in whichever situation it, it needs to be, then that's what they have to do. And at the end of the day, it's just business, really, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, we, you know, we we have a responsibility for the for the, for the player. So we think we think Idaguchi is a is a is a great emerging emerging talent. But you know, ultimately, it's Marcelo's it's Marcelo's call, and uh, and you know, he he knows that. Um, Idiguchi is a player who needs to be needs to be getting game time and came here for game time. So there is there is a responsibility for us to ensure that we're not you know we're not blocking the development of his career. I think that leads us quite a few people here uh, an away shirt. I think there's a few people concerned that we're <laughs> going to play a derby in our pants uh, <laughs> and on, <laughs> on the next game. So is there any chance you could give us an update uh, on an away shirt? Yes, there is. There is a, an exclusive reveal. There will be an away shirt. Get um, in, <laughs> um, and uh, it will be. Uh, it will be. Uh, um, uh, launch tomorrow um, and it will be available for pre-order tomorrow online and uh, we will be playing it in it in, at, uh, away at Derby so, brilliant uh, so there you go an exclusive so all them 500 questions about an away shirt there's your answer tomorrow so uh, I'll try and get a colour out of him later <laughs> um, Stuart Barnett has, uh, has mentioned uh, the club shop renovations and we've seen quite a bit of renovations over the time that Andre has been in charge at Ellen Road and it's been Modernised definitely, we start to see obviously the Bremner Square, which which I think looks great. You know, um, are we going to see more development of Ellen Road over the years, or over the year, or? Yeah, and the the um, the challenge with 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 Ellen Road, and again, this is this is uh, goes back to the the, the sort of the, the strategy you were talking about earlier. Is is ultimately you want as much of the uh, of the club revenue put back onto the pitch as you as you possibly can. You know, that that's ultimately what's going to make the, the biggest difference. Um, but at the same time. 
you know the, the the fabric of Ellen Road, which is a you know such a fantastic stadium, was was tired, and so we've uh, we've uh, which a generous way of, of uh, describing it. So we've you know we've gone on a process of of of, of gradually improving it, and we've you know improved um, uh, you know the the shop uh, this this year, and and the shop. I mean, ultimately, it's about um, obviously it's an important source of revenue, but it's ultimately it's about supporter experience, and we knew that a lot of supporters just wrote off the shop on a match day because it was such an unpleasant place to come in terms of its layout and the number of tills. You know, I think we now we now have um, we now have 21 tills. We were putting um, uh, uh, we were doing uh, you know one one supporter every 22 seconds on a, on a, at, the, at the last match. So kind of much much quicker, and it means that people can nip in and out of the shop. And and I think also it's that part of the, the ground now. So so Bremner Square, which I just thought that the uh, the 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 you know, the statue was it was almost sort of disrespectful to Billy in terms of the you state. It was in a very good state. Yeah, really the disrepair it had yeah. been in, and what we've been able to do is is um, is is allow fans to be part of that. But at, but at the same time, we'll allow it to refurbish the statue, and then we have a new storefront with a new with a new store there. Um, we've uh, Im- improved some of the hospitality facilities this year, and then there's also going to be a significant spend at, at Thorpe Arch in terms of delivering Marcelo's vi- vision from a technical perspective, and that's about you know separating the academy a little bit more from the first team, so the first team have their own areas and make it an environment that they can um, spend more of the day you know training and and, and having tactical sessions. On the on well on Thorpe Arch, and there's been a few questions about uh, um, and about moving Thorpe Arch. Is that still a obviously a future? Yes. Sort so of thing so there's that? there's a uh, there is a long term a long term or medium term plan to 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 move Thorpe Arch, and the the the, the driving force behind that is is really uh, is 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 twofold. Um, the first thing is is that we have fantastic facilities at Thorpe Arch, which just aren't used yeah. regularly enough. So we have an indoor pitch, which None of the teams use, you know, it's used a little bit by the academy, but none of the first team. So it's, you know, it's, it's, it's not used 80% of the time. An outdoor 3G pitch, which has a similar level of usage. So the idea is to move the indoor and outdoor pitches to uh, Fullerton Park, back to the traditional site of our, of our, of our training ground, and um, in what will be a community sports hub. So it will be used by the academy um, in the evenings and at weekends, but for the rest of the time, we'll be open to the community, and it will be uh, it will be partnered with um, uh, a gym, a GP surgery, and it can be something for the for the people of Beeston and, and Holbeck, which will you know which will create a really you know it should be a world class community facility. At the same time, we would move the, uh, the 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 first team training pitches to to the land at Matthew Murray, and we're in discussions with the council about that at the moment. And the logic behind that is really trying to bring. Um, the uh, our sort of talent development pathway back into the inner city. Yeah, we know that um, uh, you know we know that we miss out on talent having Thorpe Arch so way f- uh, so far away from where the heart of a lot of where a lot of the football talent is, and I think you know there's stories of, um, of Fabian Delft having to take three buses to get to training. I know that um, uh, you know the sacrifices that um, that uh, Calvin Phillips's you know mother made to make sure he could get to to and from training, and we think by having the academy in the in the city centre. Um, it'll uh, it it'll be uh, you know much better for the for the footballing talent talent of the city. So we're working really hard with the council on it. It's not an easy it's not an easy process, but um, you know as well as uh, as well as um, you know getting Leeds back into the Premier League, we want to leave uh, you know a legacy for for the community and that Leeds is a is a, is a better and stronger club. So I've spent uh, many evenings with uh, you know the residents of Holbeck and Beeston, trying to explain that this is um, not some kind of. Uh, uh, you know, clever property play. This is just about you know trying to bring facilities to the to, 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 to the, to the city, community. Really. Yeah. With the uh, shop renovation, we've seen the obviously the front bit with the big badge in the middle. Is there any plans to still change the crest it's or my, fav- my favourite topic? <laughs> 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 I've I've so long, we, so. We've left it deliberately <laughs> to warm you up a little um, bit and then chuck it in there. So I, I mean, I think we're, we're focused on on other on other areas at, uh, at the moment. So I think we um, uh, there is always I think there's a, a long term ambition that that the crest for which was which was part of the plan originally was that the uh, the Leeds United crest has the words Leeds United on it you know in, in a prominent in a prominent way but it's not a it's not a pressing it's yeah. not a pressing concern i think we're going to do some great great stuff both with uh with the kits and uh and in the broader community around the centenary season and we're working with some fan groups now as to what those plans might might be so we thought you know let's we'll just focus on making the centenary season great um uh, and and you know i'm sure the crest will come up again at some point in the future 
and you'll look forward to that day. <laughs> Already excited. Uh, a couple more comments on Facebook and Periscope. Uh, ben Schofield, is there any chance of opening shops in the surrounding areas such as Wakefield, etc.? It's a good question. It's a good question. So. Um, uh, we've we've started that um, we've started that process and it's it's definitely part of the plan. So we already have a uh, we now I think three or four weeks old. We have a, a shop at Leeds Bradford Airport, so people can pick up their shirts before they uh, go off on their summer holidays. And uh, we now, as well as a store in the Merion, we now have a store in in Trinity. So we're expanding, expanding the reach, and I think, um, and I know the retail team are already looking at uh, at branches more broadly across across Yorkshire as part of the owning Yorkshire plan. Yeah, <laughs> obviously we're going to take over Yorkshire, without a doubt. Um, other comments on um, Facebook. A lot of talk about FFP. So where are we as a club in terms of FFP? Because we've seen, I think Sheffield Wednesday had a. A f uh, sort fans of forum and it, night, it, yeah. it didn't go particularly well I've got yeah. quite a few Wednesday fan friends so I mean that's that's part of you know when Andrea talks about running the club running the club sustainably there's partly ensuring that it you know it has it has the cash to operate and partly ensuring that we stay within the the EFL the EF, EFL rules um, and as you look to increase the investment um, which we have done um, uh, not only in signings, but actually, you know, I mean, in, in terms of wage bill growth as well, and that's 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 the biggest element of our of our cost structure. And what people sometimes don't realise in terms of wage bill growth, it's not just the players that you that you bring in, but it's the existing players. You need to improve their contracts to ensure that they are they are competitive. And, and I think you know when you saw the team which came um, which came seventh under Gary Monk, you know they weren't paid like a team. That was going to come seventh, and so one of the first things we had to do when we came in was was change and improve those contracts to, to keep those players. Otherwise, they were going to be, otherwise they were going to be picked off by, yeah. by, by bigger clubs. So, um, uh, so FFP, I think in our league it's called uh, Profit and Sustainability. That's P and S, it's the official title, and we're across it, and we're we're not in any not in any danger of uh, not in any danger of, of of breaching it. But it's something we are we are. Um, we have to manage day in day out, and and at the back of our mind when we make all the decisions, it's it's to ensure that we're not subject to league sanctions. Yeah, definitely. A um, couple more on here, just so that I can't get accused of not asking you questions that the fans want to get. Uh, uh, family day has come up a couple of times. A few people wanting to know if there's a family day planned, as one was previously mentioned. There is one planned, but I don't know when it is. All right, so okay. let me let me find out. But there is, yeah, we we, we discussed that, and uh, and it was something we definitely wanted to do. So I just need to need to confirm the date. Cool. A few other bits. Um, do you think we are defensively lacking currently? Are, are we, do we look thin on the ground? I suppose that should really be a question for Marcelo, because obviously he's picking the team. Yeah, it, it, it is. Although you know, I think defensively we were, you know, that's only one game. Defensively we were we were I think very strong, and and you know. We had Pontus on the bench, who's not a, not a not a bad player to, to bring on. Yeah. Um, we, I mean, we constantly look at, you know, we, we do look at strength and depth. You know, we know it's a long season. We look at the intensity. If that if we're going to play at that intent intent level of intensity, we're going to need to be able to, you know, we're going to need to rotate the squad. So I think, um, and back to the question about what more business will be done in in the window. I think it's more likely to be a loan than it is a is a permanent purchase and uh, and Marcelo is, is currently um, spending a lot of time with with with, with Victor and, and Andrea and I in discussing where is where are the gaps, where's the strength, where can he where can he move people, you know, across the across the back line. Um, and uh, if we're gonna if we're gonna strengthen with one or, 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 or two new faces before the end of August, what are where are the positions where you get most uh, uh, most impact for your money? Good. So that'll well, appease, got, um, that'll appease about two hundred and seventy people. Into Paolo Maldini now, isn't it? Yeah, <laughs> so uh, we're all right. Yeah, in, in credit to Liam Cooper, he's had a fair bit of stick. I think it's a close run rivalry between him and Calvin Phillips for the general Leeds United scapegoat of most yeah. games. And uh, to be fair, um, they were both brilliant. They were both fantastic at the weekend, and like, long may it continue. I think if we can have forty-five more of them, uh, that'd be great. Season, <laughs> yeah. Season's done, win it. Yeah. yeah. Order, yeah, the, yeah. order the open top bus as we speak uh, yeah anyway we'll give Angus a little bit of a rest because it feels like we've just been bombarding him with questions for a little bit and we're going to push on to our favourite segment Raggy's Predictor so Raggy how did we do on the Predictor so what we do Angus every Take. week is uh, Raggy runs a Predictor and we guess the scores you might be a little bit disappointed with our guesses from last <laughs> week I think you reflect well uh, I've never been more delighted to get it wrong <laughs> for a start uh, I think it did reflect other than uh, Ben, who did predict Leeds to go up as champions anyway, 
Um, Mr. Optimism. We all got it wrong. He um, also predicted England to win World Cup as well. I'll just yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, Mr. Mr. Optimistic, <laughs> Mr. Optimistic. But yeah, just to run it over, both myself and you. Uh, Gaz, we mm. went what, uh, two one we did. defeats. We did, which, like I say, delighted that we got that. I'm sorry, all yourself, Leeds sorry. fans. So no points for us. Uh, old Ben, you went uh, two two. Which yeah. again, you know, oh dear. Uh, <laughs> young Ben, two one. Liam Cooper shafted you. <laughs> <laughs> but you're happy. Yeah, you're happy. exactly. So you pick up one point. It's got three points if you get the right result, and just mm. one point for the uh, sorry right, correct score. One point for the right result. So it's one nil nil nil. First league game. So Good we need fall. to move on uh, to the next round, which will be on Saturday, five thirty kickoff at Pride Park, Derby versus Leeds. So we will start with um, you, Ben. Let's Two nil Leeds. <laughs> I knew that one could see it's all going up now. Do we get a guest? Oh, no, watch- do we get a guest slot as well. Does the guest get? To oh yeah, order? definitely. I watched Derby against Reading on Friday night. Friday, Friday night. and how Reading didn't put them to bed within the first half, I do not know. Well, that that's another debate, and it's written on my list for later. But we'll do it now. Um, Derby. There's a lot of said about Derby. Uh, and they renamed Frank Lampard's Derby. Frank Lampard's to, Derby. Sorry, yeah, I've got to say that now. At the uh, beginning now. And obviously, uh, the, they got that guy Joseph Foon, who cost Victor Autry's mobile phone. If you're led to believe what you're led to believe, um, after he screwed us. Uh, but they've not <laughs> strengthened. They've not strengthened the defence in any way, shape, or form. Uh, and I, I honestly, so we've had a lot running around like they do, and yeah, exactly, causing and, havoc. And Gaffer on his bucket. We'll have I to. might change that to four 0 <laughs> That's why I'm anyway, sorry, back, to, back, to, back, to back 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 2 0. Uta? Leeds, obviously. Oh, I'm, sorry, standard. I'm confident now. But I'm Angus confident now. What now. about Angus? Angus is on the spot one, now. I'll go 1 0. 1 0. Yeah. I just Leeds. want 3 points. You just want 3 points. 1 0. We'll take <laughs> that. Let's see. I don't want to Yeah, we'll take that, won't we? Definitely. Right? Yeah. So we'll update next week on Raggy's Predictor and uh, we'll see how we got on. Uh, after we did this segment last week, I was inundated with tweets with people giving their predictions. So keep them going, uh, and we'll try and keep a note of them if we can. But there was literally and it's way about, too early to go through. There was literally the, about three hundred through of them. the uh, season one. Yeah, we're not going through so season one just yet. We'll recap them maybe halfway through, and then at the end. Also, Angus, I've been asked to um, ask if you'd like to um, join our fantasy football league, which has uh, got now got three hundred and forty-three teams consisting of a lot of famous people: uh, Mike Bushell of uh, Breakfast TV, yeah. uh, Tom Maguire of This Parish. Ollie Holmes of Castleford Tigers, Jai Hitchcock of. But now, he can't figure out how to work it. Yeah, he can't figure out how to work it. I think he's picked nine players, Jai. <laughs> um, Noel Wilson, uh, no, Noel Wilson. That's two different people altogether. Noel Whelan uh, and your very own Digital Wilson has okay. got a team. Uh, Andy Cousins, uh, and then Nicholas Costa Walder of Game of Thrones. As you can see, we've got quite an eclectic mix of celebrities. I'd be pleased to join. Yeah, <laughs> cool. Give another reason for people to ridicule me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right, that's good then. Uh, obviously, Ben's our uh, supremo with the fantasy football, so how can people join Ben? Just join on app. Oh, that's easy then. Thank you. <laughs> I'll, I'll and, uh, share a link or something. <laughs> yeah, Ben, I'll share. Uh, no, if you check out at Talking Shit Trophy yeah, on Twitter, it's there. Uh, and Steve Dunn, who does a great job of running it, he can uh, he can help you out there. So we've had a few predictions on the old Facebook. Four-one uh, leads, click to score twice. Uh, Kieran Harvey, three 0 leads. Um, and Philip Million, think what you will see a lot from Leeds this season is scoring early with our intensity, and that brings us on to a good point uh, in the way that. Bielsa sets his team up and wants a lot of intensity. Um, <laughs> you've got to name your fantasy football team Badgegate. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's triple me there. Um, <laughs> that was quite good. I like that. Um, do you think? Do you feel that the way? Obviously, we can't judge off just the one game. But do you feel the way that the intensity is set up that it's sustainable over a long period of time? Because for it's, it's well known this season for being uh, this league for being tough going. I, th- I think it's going to. I think it's going to be. It's going to be challenging. Um, it's not something which has escaped Marcelo, so he's he's he's, he's aware of it. Um, I think what gave us a, um, you know, all a lot of confidence was when you looked at you looked at the, at the way the team played, and then you looked at the players we had on we had on the bench. So they have Lewis Baker, Patrick Bamford, Pontus yeah. Janssen, um, you know, Jack Harrison. I mean, they're all 
there were players that you know we were, we were talking about. You know, what, what's the team that we put out against against uh, as Marcelo put out against Bolton? Well, he can put all the bench on, you know, on straight away. Yeah. And I don't know whether the team's significantly significantly weaker. So there is um there is some uh, there is some strength in in depth. But it's a it's a it's a hard and, and grueling season. But I think um, uh, the um, you know the way that he's prepared the team, the team are prepared to to, 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 to keep that level of intensity intensity up. And I'm sure there's going to you know there's going to be there'll be plenty of tough games and plenty of games where it doesn't doesn't quite come off. And you know, I think in every game in the championship, you know the margins are, are really fine. So you see um you know that that inch shot was you know. Two inches from going in, yeah. uh, Stoke had a chance where they were two on one, and probably should have scored. Liam um, Cooper, excellent piece of defending Liam, for that, by the way. Yeah, superb from Liam. Um, but um, so I think you know it, it, it's going to be the season will be defined by how we cope in the moments when stuff doesn't quite go our way, and I think that's what caught us out last year. Is when when the season you know became a little bit derailed, we we just couldn't re we couldn't recover it. And you know I think hopefully we've got a we've got a coach and a, and a group of players now who, when we go through those barren runs that will undoubtedly happen in this. In this season, when we have to cope with um, injuries, and I mean, hopefully, we won't go through a period where we get six players sent off in <laughs> eight games or whatever it was. But but it's going to be how the how the team respond in in, in those in those well, in those. Just players. taking that second half as a microcosm, after the delirium of half time and two 0 up, and I can't believe how good we're playing. We start off and I, we concede what I, I don't think it's not a penalty. penalty. It, no, it's terrible, and you think, oh, here we go again. You know, and what did we do? Just went right up the other end. Perfect delivery. Cooper nods it in, and we threw. You know, restored it, and then the rest of the game is just a breeze. And like you say, you think, here we go again. But now, just recovered straight away, and that's great. Barry Douglas was worth his transfer fee just for that ball in. Yeah, just for that header. It's yeah. just we were, I talked about it earlier before we came on air uh, with Dom, who's who's in the back there, and. Uh, We've been lacking that for a long time. That that ball's just a horrible delivery Blues. where defender doesn't know what he's going to do with it, and it's it, keeper don't know if it's come do I stay. It's got yeah. that much pace on it's a cracking ball. A bit of a joke right, around me where we sit and um, a, a typical Leeds corner. You did first man and then that were it. Mm. But to to get a goal from corner first game after game, Barry Douglas were brilliant. Yeah, uh, a couple more questions. Um, a Leeds United Museum, that was something that has been mentioned in the past. Is that still a plan in the pipeline? Yeah, or? it's something we'd like to do around the around the cent the centenary. Um to make them work we really need to, to make the uh the um you know create a, a, you know probably an improved stadium tour and give people the opportunity to come and see the stadium and then go to the uh, go to a museum. But we're we're um uh we're uh, um We've already been collecting the memorabilia. We've catalogued some of the memorabilia that we we already have. So I think it's I think it's something that we will we'll ultimately do. Cool. Uh, and just to set a settle an in show debate, was there a coach in the East stand on the game on Sunday? If you want. I'm, uh... <laughs> <laughs> right, we'll take that from what it was. If you put uh, you in the doo doo, well, do one. Yeah, yeah, just yeah, a fan. He was yeah, just a fan who was a very fan. passionate. Exactly. Passionate fan in full kit. Yeah, we'll take that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and final question for me. I apologise for anybody who have not managed to read them out, but literally we've just been inundated. Uh, Benjamin Button. No, sorry, Benjamin Britton. Is there any plans <laughs> for away tickets to go down the point system? As demand's always great, but it is the fairest way to manage the demand. So, yeah, so there is a. Um, the, we use a combination of a, of a tracker on a, on a way. So the, the ways the way to get you can buy an away season ticket, which guarantees you one, or they're sold on a tracker, which is which is based on 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 points. Um, and we try and balance it out between we don't want away tickets to become a closed shop. And if you haven't been to all the games, you can never come again. But at the same time, we we kind of recognise that if you travel you know far and wide, then when they're games where we have lower allocations, it should be based on based on loyalty. But it's one of those ones where when the team are playing well, um, we have to disappoint lots of people and it's just deciding how how and who yeah. you disappoint mm. the fairest way of doing it um, and then somebody's declared their love for you Angus um, Michael em uh, Mitchell Emerson he asked that question then said I love you Angus you're my favourite that's, that's, that's good <laughs> <laughs> that's fairly unusual well yeah, worth coming on the show just for that it's going to go get a shirt with Angus and not we're outside not in the I got, car park I, got, I, think I got a right. fantastic piece of uh, abuse away at Fulham um, uh, but they thought I was Victor <laughs> 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 which, is, which is one of the most one of the most unlikely bits of mistaken identity ever but um, I took it <laughs> well, this was a question we were talking about earlier in the office uh, obviously how much emails do you get from people that are just random people who just drop you an email? We get we get a lot we got a lot we get a lot of a lot of feedback. I'm not not short of feedback in terms of what, what, I, <laughs> what I should be doing or where I'm going wrong. Some of it some of it's um, some of it's just 
abusive. Um, <laughs> some of it's uh, quite funny. So when we were going through a bad spell last last year, someone wrote in and said, "Why?" Um, why doesn't uh, Angus pick players and Victor draw badges? Um, which, <laughs> which, which I thought was uh, was quite good, but um, most of it is is constructive, and you know we we understand that you know we understand fans' frustrations, and and you know there's 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 no lack of commitment but to trying yeah. to get stuff right. But most of it is that most of the support we get is is really constructive, and uh, and uh, and and people just want the best for the club. Of course, yeah. Well, that kind of leads us to an end of the episode, because if I went through all these comments on Periscope, I'd have to sh- wade through the abuse of us. But to be honest, then, uh, <laughs> for some of them, well, yeah, I, I got some for, for interrupting you, <laughs> when you were about to tell us all these transfers, and some guy said, well, he was about to tell us transfers, then that big lad stopped him. <laughs> and then, so, oh, sorry oh, about that. Over on Facebook, we got somebody asking for your email. <laughs> oh, give that out. Uh, so yeah, that kind of brings us to an end of episode 19, uh, unless everybody's got anything else. Young Ben? Nothing to contribute. Nothing to contribute? No. Any questions I'm about just too junior happy. tickets? No, or? I'm no. just <laughs> I'm just genuinely just so pleased at how this... How Can we, we open a crash for Ben, for Young Ben? <laughs> yeah. No, I'm genuinely just so pleased with how we've started this season and I'm still looking forward to the rest of it. Can we get fruit shoots and turkey dinosaurs? Oh, sorry, Ben, more, more digs about your youngness. Um, <laughs> Right, you you, did anyone this. see that new mascot? West Brom's new mascot? Yeah, the boiler. The boiler. Yeah. boiler. <laughs> is there any? Are we going to get like a 32 <laughs> red roulette as no, a no, mascot? No boiler man. Although we did, we did get some. Boiler offer, man. We did, we got some offers to sponsor Marcella's bucket. Yeah, yeah. we were just so, about to mention that. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. Was a, Are you going to be um, selling them in the, the club the, shop? Def, they'll definitely be a retail item. For <laughs> <laughs> must, must have Christmas present. Yeah. <laughs> I want one just for playing football manager. Just sit on it. Yeah. Just sit on the bucket. Oh, yeah. oh, you're not one of them who puts a full suit on for a cup <laughs> final, are you? Yeah. Have a press conference. I just sit in my boxes. Never, <laughs> got, never, <laughs> never got there. But anyway, uh, we'll release Angus from the thousands of questions. Uh, so that brings us to the end of episode 19. So thanks to everybody who's tuned in and everybody who's um, had some comments to make. I apologise if we didn't get all the way through to um, them all. Even the abuse, please. Um, so yeah, uh, so a massive thanks to Angus for coming on the show. Thank you very much. Uh, and good luck for the remainder of the season. Thanks a lot. Um, ben, cheers. Like for us in- and for follow inter- us interrupting and everybody. share us and... Buy some merchandise. But yeah, yeah, buy some merchandise. Does yeah. people want mugs? Do you want to know uh, the Grand Total Army t-shirts we've sold? Go on. None. None. <laughs> buy some t-shirts. No t-shirts. Anyway, never mind. So yeah, brings us to an end of episode 19. So thanks very much. Yeah, like Ben says, don't forget to like, um, subscribe, retweet, all that other stuff. Uh, and we'll be back next week. Uh, for episode 20 just prior to the uh, cup game over at Ellen Road so thanks very much for listening uh, and that's it I'll see you see you see you the hero is Carl shut 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 shut